John Cornyn from the great state of Texas, which is going to be transitioned out of the union under Joe Biden, I think. Senator Cornyn, good morning. <laughs> good morning, you. Good to talk to you. Where were you and what did you think when that uh, that came out of the vice president's mouth. I mean, I, uh, I my voice is a little broken up because I'm still cheering for the Browns on Sunday. But uh, what did, what was your reaction when the former vice and you're his friend? I mean, he wants to end your state. Yeah, my thought was that uh, boy, there's there's probably nothing he could say that would be uh, more of a direct attack on the economy of Texas, Pennsylvania, North Dakota, Oklahoma. Ohio, uh, you name it. So I think he put uh, I think he put some uh, battleground states in play and uh, helped the president quite a bit because this is just this is economic suicide uh, to, to deny the benefits of uh, particularly natural gas, which have reduced emissions dramatically and changed the geopolitics of the planet. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's crazy. I just had Harold Ham on billionaire from Oklahoma, still in the fray after sure. 53 years. And he reminded me that energy is freedom and that $6 a gallon gasoline. I only had to get up to about $5 a gallon in California four or five years ago. But driving around Virginia last weekend down to Monticello, it was 2 bucks and 15 cents a gallon. That, I mean, John Cornyn, that is great for American families, and Joe Biden wants to change it. Well, that's money, that's money in people's pockets. You think about the low price of uh, gasoline and what, what kind of stimulus that is for, for ordinary Americans and uh, more money to spend on their family, food, entertainment, uh, you know, rent, uh, you name it. But, you know, this is an ideological battle as much as anything else. And, of course, Joe Biden has to stay one step ahead of AOC and Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and the other advocates of the Green New Deal. But uh, I think he, he just gave uh, Trump a shot of adrenaline in, well, I, in I agree. the days of now, this election. I was glued to the uh, C-SPAN channel yesterday as you and your colleagues voted to confirm Justice Barrett. And congratulations. You did a lot of leading in the Judiciary Committee, and I appreciate it, Senator. But I heard Chuck Schumer say just the wildest stuff, saying this was a dark night for the Senate. I was thinking about the Alien Registration Act of 1940, which paved the way for Japanese <laughs> internment. I was thinking about the Alien Sedition Act, the, the civil rights filibuster by the Democrats in 64. This is a great day. I, I mean, you've confirmed a lot of justices in your tenure in the Senate, but you must have been extraordinarily proud last night. It's a 6-3 court now on jump balls and i just love it i think we're going to have great freedom as a result senator yeah this is uh really i you have to give majority leader mitch mcconnell a lot of credit for prioritizing this and i know he's been in regular communication with the president encouraging him to fill these seats as they become vacant and uh, this is a generational transformation but I really think it's it's more of a restoration of uh, the traditional role of the courts in our society Democrats are fearful of Amy Coney Barrett because she won't play their game of uh, when they lose an election or they lose a vote in the Congress. Uh, the courts are not going to bail them out. And I think that's good for democracy. That's good for the Senate and the Congress. That's good for the American people who will regain uh, some of the uh, their power rather than surrendering it to unelected judges. Well, Senator, they ran a radical against you in Texas. You're pulling away, and that's great, because your radical opponent would take away people's guns, their First Amendment liberties, religious liberty, property rights. They've run radicals in North Carolina. They ran a radical in Maine against Susan Collins, a wonderful senator, against Joni Ernst in Iowa, against uh, uh, in Arizona. Mark Kelly's not an, a radical, but he certainly got Chinatized. I, I just wonder if you think the Senate is secure. Because we got to have a bulwark to work with President Trump if he's reelected, or to stop Joe Biden if he isn't. Exactly. No, I, well, I'm 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 nervous about it. Um, and but you're exactly right. The Democratic Party has has shifted, in a, dramatically to the left, and Joe Biden's not in control. He may be the the front man, but we know who's driving the policy and uh, who would be in charge of uh, in the Senate and uh, if they, and join Nancy Pelosi in the House to do all of these crazy deals, Medicare for all, the Green New Deal, uh, raising taxes, putting the oil and gas industry out of business, um, raising your utility bills and, and gasoline prices. I mean, we got to stop them. And the only ones that can do it is the Senate if, uh, if uh, President Trump is not reelected. But I'm I'm kind of liking his chances more and more as each day goes by here in the closing days of the campaign because of some of these unforced errors by uh, Joe Biden. 
I got a minute left, Senator Cornyn. I don't know if Texas has early voting, Ron, in San Antonio, Houston, Dallas right now, Beaumont. Is there early voting in Texas? People got to get out and defend their right to assemble, their right to religious liberty, their right to, to bear and keep arms. Can they vote now or do they have to wait till Tuesday? Absolutely. They can vote till the uh, till the 30th, like three more days. And uh, we've already had historic turnout. We're probably going to have between 11 and 12 million voters. But uh, I'd encourage all your listeners to get out and cast their ballot. They can do it early, just like going to the grocery store safe and secure, or they can do it on Election Day. But please vote. Senator John Corner, always great to talk to you.